What's up, traders? I'm Hotshot. I am not an educator. My educator is ICT. For free education, check out his YouTube channel, The Inner Circle Trader. With that being said, this channel and video is for entertainment and my own learning purposes only. This is not financial or trading advice. I am not a financial or trading advisor. Please trade at your own risk. Um, we're currently looking at um, live prices, it is 5.19 a.m. where I am, 7.19 a.m. New York time. Um, currently, um, the New York kill zone just opened right here at 7. Now, to break down what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a buy. Okay. Now, I know it's pretty messy, but allow me to explain. <clears throat> If we look at the dollar index, and I know I haven't really went over this on the YouTube channel, um, but this is something pretty advanced, um, and it's actually pretty simple as well. But if you look at the dollar index, applying you know daily bias, our checklist, we just want to know what phase the dollar index is in. And right now, you can see that it had this run of liquidity, market structure shift, so this is a reversal, retracement up into in this gap right here. And now here is an expansion to target these lows. So dollar is bearish. And then if you look at Great British Pound, it had the run of liquidity, the market structure shift, retracement into the gap, and now the expansion, and it already took out that liquidity high. So this is bullish. So if you pair the weaker with the stronger pair, Obviously, on GBP USD, you're going to get bullish. Okay. So, right now, GBP USD, we are bullish. And you can see that on daily, we're targeting this high and this high. So, another easy way to get our bias, right? Um, and know when we're in a trending market. Anyways, if we drop to like the, the 15 minute, you can see. Um, <clears throat> this is what London did. Here is the Asian range. Here's the Asian range is low right here. And here's the Asian range is high, right? For London kill zone, price due to swing, manipulated down and made that daily candle lower end of the wick, taking out the liquidity here and here. Boom, swiping out both liquidity. That's the manip manipulation. This is where smart money accumulated some longs to then push price up the rest of the kill zone. Had a minor retracement prior to New York, and it retraced into this 15-minute fair value gap here, and then it expanded again. Now, at current moment, price for New York is trading at the very top of that daily candle. If you look at it, it's distributing out of a little bit of, uh, of some orders, but at the moment, you know, I'm still looking for a buy, so... Where would I be looking for a buy at? Well, <clears throat> I buy, I do want to look for a buy down here. I wish it, obviously it's a long shot. It would be cool for it to come all the way back down here and then expand back up to end the day. But it's a very big long shot. At the moment, there's this 15 minute fair value gap right here that you could see that price. Um, It's currently not tapping it at all, but you know, I wonder if price can come back into it and then we can get long and then expand a little bit more for the rest of the day. Um, we dropped to our five minute. Yeah, that, that'd totally be a good move. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> I was just monitoring the one minute now to see um, like, if it would come, you know, in and do its thing. I was thinking that since we're at the top of the wick, maybe we can look for a short opportunity, but that would be counter trend to my bias. And I don't really want to trade counter trend to my bias. Um, just to remind y'all, I am taking the FTMO 50K challenge currently. This is my third week and I'm actually down 3%. So, I'm definitely not looking to trade counter trend to my bias. I definitely want to stick with my bias, especially because we do know that we're bullish and to sell against, you know, bias is this kind of, you know, it's 
not logical at all. And you definitely want to apply logic whenever you're looking at these markets. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's, that's what we're looking at now. I definitely like to see it come in, come into the 15 minute fair value gap where we can look for opportunities. So we're going to set an alert right there. <clears throat> and if it does come in there, it'll take out this liquidity that's pretty much being built on the one minute. Boom, boom, boom. You know, there's liquidity here. There's liquidity. Honestly, this liquidity got rammed. So there's liquidity here and there's liquidity here. Okay, I'm going to delete this. Cause the reason why I had that on was because you can see that the one minute had this little, um, <clears throat> it shifted market structure right here. There's a fair value gap right here. Price tapped it. And then it moved up and took out liquidity above here. And it was about a one-to-one -one high. So that's the only reason why I had that on my chart. But <clears throat> I didn't take that position. I thought it was kind of a risky position. I do want to see like a deeper, you know, uh, manipulation down into this fair value gap for a long opportunity. But to kind of explain what I went over in the beginning of the video with G with the British pound and the dollar, right? So that's pretty much the correlation of pairs for Forex specifically. This is Forex specific, right? Let's say you're trading. Let's say you're trading a pair, right? And let's say it's your favorite pair, GBP, JPY. Why is that your favorite pair? Right? Is it your favorite pair because in the past you've had your best trading day on it, you, your best trading week on it? <clears throat> you know, um, is it your your favorite pair because you know there's many different ways, um, reasons why you may really like a pair, but you should um, you know, you should not be trading a pair because of some emotional attachment to it. So, uh, you know, just because you had one of your best days on a pair and you quote unquote love a pair, that's an emotional attachment. And you don't want to trade something just because you had good, good success with it early in your trading career. That's actually a fallacy. So just because it was good at the start of your career doesn't mean it always will be. So keep an object objective approach to the market and never involve emotion. And uh, never trade a pair because it's your favorite pair. You know, trade the pair that's going to give you the best outcome or the easiest trades, right? So <clears throat> to kind of explain, um, you do want to apply logic to the market. Um, look to the futures. You can see down here I have the futures, <clears throat> you know, charts. And uh, you want to look to them to find which pair to trade. Um, you know, specifically, in other words, what pair is trending? Um, so... You obviously don't want to trade in consolidations. And by finding pairing like a weaker currency with a stronger currency gives you a trending market. But pairing a strong currency with a strong currency, that's going to equal consolidation. Vice versa, a weak currency with a weak currency is going to equal consolidation as well. So you want to pair a strong currency with a weak currency, like how we went over at the beginning of the video, um, how the dollar is moving bearish and the pound is moving bullish. So since the pound is stronger than the dollar, then GBP USD should be going up, right? Now, if we look at other pairs, for example, um, we know that the dollar is going down. We know that, uh, you know, British is going down. If we look at Euro, for example, it had a little run of liquidity, market structure shift right here retraced into the gap and now it's kind of ex expanding as well so we can anticipate maybe your usd to be bullish as, as well and obviously today it was a bullish day you can see that it created the downside of the wick and expanding and potentially targeting this liquidity so this is the next draw on liquidity for euro usd we could be seeing you know some buys up into that as well um <clears throat> Let's see another example. Let's go to the Aussie Australian dollar futures. Um, you can see that it ran out liquidity here, retraced. There was no market structure shift. This is a retracement. And it, this is a failed lower low leg because it created a swing right here, another swing right here. And now it's going a little higher. So currently, this seems like it's 
you know, consolidating. It's in this little like consolidation in a way. So we don't want to be, you know, focusing on a pair that's not expanding or, you know, obviously going in one direction. So right here on the Swiss France, uh, Swiss franc, I should say, I don't know how to say it, honestly, the Swissy, um, CHF specifically, you can see that took out this liquidity here, ran out this liquidity and created this high right here. And then this low was lower than this one. So it technically kind of ran out liquidity in a way. And then it expanded. This is like a market structure shift right here. This is your retracement. So this is your reversal retracement into like this huge gap right here. And now we can potentially see some expansion to target this liquidity, right? So Swissy could be bullish. Now, if we look at the USD CHF, that pair could possibly be going down as soon as this starts taking off, right? If we bring up USD CHF, just so we can look at it. Wow, it's in a consolidation at the moment. But you can see that price had this liquidity run right here and then created like an equal high right here. I don't think it, no, nope, this high did not go higher than this high. This high is lower than this high. And then it market structure shifted. So it created a failed higher high. Market structure shifted, took out this low right here. You can see that there's this big fair value gap on the daily chart. Price retraced into that fair value gap. Now we can potentially see some bearish selling pressure, right? Start going down and start targeting the low here. So this is the next draw on liquidity for me, right? On USD CHF. This is the next draw of liquidity. Okay. So why is it the next draw of liquidity? Well, if we apply logic to the market, we know that US dollar is bearish and we know that CHF, you know, is <clears throat> bullish potentially because it just retraced into, uh, you know, a point of interest and we could potentially see the next draw on liquidity is a bullish uh, buy side liquidity, right? So applying logic, we do expect this chart to go down as well. So that's applying logic. Um, if we look at, for example, the New Zealand dollar, you see the New Zealand dollar ran out these lows right here, retrace, created a filled lower low, and then this can be like a reversal, but at the moment, this looks like it's also consolidating. Same with the Australian dollar. That's the thing with Australian and New Zealand dollar. They're pretty much like correlated in a way. They're very similar. So it's kind of pointless to trade the New Zealand dollar in my opinion anyway, but everybody's different. Um, and then the yen, you can see that the yen just expanded, sort of did a little retracement but it's just currently in this big bullish expansion, right? So if USD JPY is bullish and US dollar is bearish, if we bring up USD JPY, you could obviously see that it's bearish, right? Moving down. Now, why is it moving down, hot shot? Well, again, because USD, is bearish and JPY is bullish. So if we get the pair, USD JPY should be bearish, right? It should be moving down. So you'd be looking, your bias would be bearish. And this is another way, easy way to approach your daily bias and understanding what your bias is, you know, and what you're looking for. Instead of implementing the whole, you know, um, daily bias document that we have here, you know, that's still very awesome to implement, I'd say, especially especially so you can know what you want to see, you know, hold and what invalidates your bias and things like that. Um, but this is just an easy way to kind of understand, oh, look at, we, we're getting our GBPUSD. See what's going on. Okay, so I just tapped into the fair value gap. Boom. We look right here and we apply Fibonacci to like this one right here. To this high right here equilibrium isn't to like way down here so it's possible this is going to be like the invalidation of the fair value gap and 
you know, it's possible that we can continue retracing down into that equilibrium point. We drop to our five minute. Uh, three minute, let's go to three minute. Just a scap right here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to scale in on this big fair value gap, see if there's anything closer down here. Um, see, there's this gap right here at equilibrium that we could potentially see price tap into. And then we can look for a buy up, right? Um, let's see, watch three. Boom, boom. Draw this out. That's at equilibrium exactly. Right here, I'll probably look to take a buy. Have like a buy pip stop loss. And then I'll probably look for like a quick one-to-one -one. because I'm down 5% on the account. I really just want to be in and out. You know, that's my thinking right now. I just want to be in and out. I don't really want to mess around. I don't want to stay in for a one to two or one to three. I don't want to do any of that. I want to get back to break even. I'm on my third week. I want to at least be at break even or in profit so I can get at least 14 extra days on my FTMO challenge. Um, ultimately, I want to pass this. It'd be so badass to just come back, you know, because I'm down 5%. That would be some shit. That would be tight because that's a 15% comeback. You know what I mean? That'd be phenomenal. It really would. But <clears throat> I did want to show you guys, like, you know, correlation. Go back to SAT. Like, um, you know, between these futures, go back back to SAT. To pull up the right futures, just type in, um, whenever you're adding a symbol, go to futures and then type in, like, um, for example, type in um, Canadian. And then it'll bring up you know, um, certain charts. Um, the one that you want to look for specifically is a 6C1 exclamation point. And then the pound is 6B1 exclamation point. The euro is 6E1 exclamation point. This is the Aussie. This is the Swiss franc, New Zealand, and Japanese yen. So you can go and look those up. Look at the, the way that, you know, they move and just pair the weaker with the stronger. And you know, it's gonna, it, it'll blow your mind, honestly, it's, it's, you know, it's logic, it's logical as to why, you know, the pair moves the way it does. If you take a look at the individual currencies and how they're moving, and you pair the weaker with the stronger, vice versa, you'll understand why the pair is trending. So, um, at this moment, y'all, I don't want to keep y'all just sitting here all bored, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this recording now. And we will come back to this setup potentially whenever we see some opportunity arise and whenever we take a trade. Okay, so I'm going to pause this recording. We'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, yeah, um, price didn't come back into this level. Where the equilibrium point is. No, price just tapped into that 15 minute fair value gap and began expanding up again. Now it's at the top of its, its daily candle range again. You can see how expanded that, that day's candle is right now, currently, you know? So I don't think we're going to get a buy opportunity. I should have entered there, could have entered there, but. I want to get more closer to equilibrium. I'll be honest, y'all. I'll be 100% honest. I don't like Fibonacci. I don't like equilibrium. I don't like that OTE. It, it just seems a little too... Because your ICT place says place it on the range, and sometimes that range isn't... Like the, the ranges ICT demonstrates, I don't understand. I'll be honest, 100%. I don't understand the rate, the ranges that he applies Fibonacci on. It confuses me. And I feel like Fibonacci is just something, it's kind of like trend lines and like, um, like support and resistance and stuff like that. It's, I don't think it, the word for it is subjective. I don't know if that's the right word that I'm looking for, but it's kind of how ICT says that 
Like it, it, it's stuff that you apply onto your chart. And, you know, everybody can see it differently. Like this trend line is going to, you know, connect these three points. And somebody else might think that this trend line is going to connect these two points. Same with Fibonacci. Somebody might think that that's the range and somebody might think the range is different. And ICT applies the range is way different than what I was always taught with Fibonacci. Obviously, that was retail. But like the way that ICT applies, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I honestly want to start leaving that out. And of course, since this video is for my own learning and entertainment purposes, of course, um, I do want to notate that from whenever as I rewatch this video going forward, Hotshot, make sure that you honestly forget about the FIB because the FIB ain't shit. Obviously, you can see that it didn't retrace into equilibrium and it just took off. It gave a really nice opportunity to enter and we missed it. Why did we miss it? Well, because we're over here focused on equilibrium and I don't believe in that shit. I'll be honest. I don't believe in equilibrium. I think that, you know, I just broke down why I think it's, you know, not really all that, but we did run out this new day's current high. It just created another new high. At this point, maybe potentially we could see like a, a market structure shift bearish where we could potentially get in for, you know, maybe a sell. I mean, obviously we don't want to sell counter trend to our bias, but, and I'm not getting like, you know, I'm not getting FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, but we did have a liquidity run right here. And if it does want a market structure shift bearish, provide an opportunity, maybe I'll risk like half a percent or a quarter percent. Say if I could get some opportunity there, hit a one to one R and then we can call it a morning. But and then if it does, we'll go ahead and provide that in the next video. But I kind of want to keep this video short. The purpose of this video was to really show you guys how these currencies are correlated and how you can actually find a trending pair. So now you have no excuse for my pair is consolidating. My favorite pair, oh, GJ, my favorite pair is consolidating. Stop bitching, go look for another pair. Now, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's not about trading the pair that gave you the best return at one point because it's not always going to give you the best return. You want to trade the pair that's going to give you the easiest and the most logical setups, right? So go find them. Um, until next time, you guys, thank you so much if you're able to watch till the end. If you learned something new, make sure you drop a like below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hopefully we earned subs your subscription today. Subscribe comment what you want to see in the future if you want me to remake a video or go more in depth in a future video about a certain topic comment that down below and i'll get to it Till next time thank you guys for watching